welcome to A Window to Born. Um, my name is Mavis Robinson and I'm your host and uh, Captain, my co-host, is napping but he'll join us shortly. Um, and joining me in the studio today is one of the Historical Society's newest volunteers, um, Haley Grobleski. Haley, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, it's really nice to see you um, and it's really nice to have you on the team at the Historical Society. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, before we talk about what you're doing for, for our group, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the woman behind the Facebook uh, <laughs> page. Um, let's talk about your, your background. So, um, so okay. where do you come from? Uh, well, I come from Plymouth, born area. I was okay. born in Plymouth, but I was raised in Bourne, and then also in Plymouth, um, South Plymouth, so it's really this whole area. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to school in Bourne, and okay. then in Plymouth, so I was really kind of raised right in this area. I work over the bridge at Barlow's Clam Shack, mm -hmm. so I'm always right so, in the thick of it. And the name Grobleski, it, mm -hmm. It's a very unique name, yes. um, and, uh, and, it, and it's a name sort of well-known and well-loved in our town. Um, and I, went, I, I feel like I end up, I went to a, a homecoming dance with a Steve Grobleski at one point. That's that, my dad. That's your dad. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> so um, so your, your dad's Steve Grobleski, and, yep. and who's your mom? My mom is Sheree Daly, okay. or Sheree Barlow Daly. All right, all right. Um, Barlow's also, I think, a well-known name in the town. I think so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Between the Grobleskis and the Barlows, I mean, you have, like, you're related to, you know, maybe Lots of people. 40%. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what was it like growing up as part of that big clan? Did you have a sense of, you know, so many um, people that you were related to? Yes, definitely. You feel like you're related to every third person. Yep, um, yep. And then the other two out of the three that you're not related to, they know you from someone else in the family. Oh, you know, my dad, my uncle, this cousin, that other uncle. Yeah. You know, yeah. everyone knows someone in my family, even if they don't know me or even if they don't know my mom or dad. Oh, you know, I know your Uncle Chip, maybe, or your Uncle Tommy. Right. You right. know, everyone is known. So yeah. it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. to be known and then sometimes I get recognized or you know I'll be with my mom and you know it's interesting yeah well I mean looking at you I do I realize you do look a lot like your dad which I you know I don't yep. know until we were sitting across <laughs> from each other I noticed that and you remind me in some ways of your paternal grandmother did, did you know her at all I did yeah we were very close um, her name you was, know her name was Mita yes yep. she helped raise me um, she passed away when I was seven and I was oh. devastated. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was, it was good when I knew her. Yeah. And we still kind of keep her alive through memories and stories and pictures. Yeah. So even though she's gone, she's still very much present in my family. Yeah. And she's actually buried over at Otis. Um, oh. So I can kind of go visit her anytime I want. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Um, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she, she's a person that I think impacted a lot of people in a really quiet way. Mm -hmm. You know, she wasn't one. She wasn't brash. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you have any memories of her? Uh, specific um, memories? I have a couple memories in the garden okay. at her and my grandpa's house in the backyard yeah. when I was younger. They had a huge garden. I'm talking like 40 by 40 square. It was giant yeah yeah um and you know we would help her plant stuff in the spring and early summer i don't know exactly when it was and then you know in the autumn we would help dig it up and harvest everything and mm -hmm. it was so cool when i was little yeah because you know a lot of people don't do that anymore and you know it's just nice especially when you're a kid and you just want to be outside and you're digging and you're doing this and that and right it was really interesting because she kind of taught us you know when well, when to plant and how to plant, and then also when to harvest everything. And, you know, if you could pick a tomato, you know, if it looks this color, if it doesn't, if it's hanging this way, like, yeah. you know, she gave us all this wisdom and it's just kind of neat because when you're little, you don't realize how much she's actually teaching you. Right, right, But it was right. so much fun. And I have one specific memory of digging up potatoes. Oh, cool. You know, we had to use this 
I don't know if it was a pitchfork or whatever it yeah, was, yeah. you know, I don't know the tool, but we had to use it and dig them up and then shake all the dirt off. And yeah. it was just so much fun because, like I said, I was little and you love playing in the dirt when you're little. Yeah. So yeah. it was just so cool. And, you know, finding these potatoes. It must have felt like <laughs> almost like an, like finding buried treasure, right? Yeah. Like, all, yeah. like it, like it exactly. looks like a leafy but it was plant a potato. and then there's food <laughs> underground. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. it was cool. It was awesome. And then we would... um you know, we'd get the zucchini out of the garden and then make fresh zucchini bread. Wow. And to this day, I still love that. And whenever I find someone that can make it, I'm like, oh, hey, you want to make it for me? <laughs> <laughs> you have helped us out in the in the office quite a bit, and Captain's always uh, happy to see you. Um, how did you get involved with the Bourne Historical Society of all places? Um, well, my grandparents, my Nana and Papa, um, Diane Flynn and Skip Barlow, are part of the Historic Society. Yes, very uh, important part. Yeah. yeah, Diane is the president right now, I believe. Yep. Um, so I got involved actually probably about 10 years ago. Okay. I started volunteering at the different events like the Christmas train. I was an elf um, for Perfect. quite a few years. Yep. And then the pirate festival, I started, you know, dressing up as pirates and being a volunteer there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's probably where I first met you. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, the Barlow, you know, grandchildren are so yes. <laughs> There's numerous. So many of I us. can lose track of who I meet, you know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but I do remember you made it. You made a great pirate, and mm -hmm. uh, it was nice to have that, you know, young energy. Yeah, I, um, yeah. I do that every year still. Yeah. So that's always fun. Yeah. Um, and it's always nice, you know. It's in May. It's a nice day. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that kind of stuff, just to volunteer at different events. And then I graduated college last year with a marketing degree. Mm -hmm. And my Nana said, oh, you know, we need some marketing help down at the Historic Society. You know, could you come in and help us out? So I said, of course. Yeah, yeah. So. And it's been a really perfect fit. It's, it's really <laughs> nice. Um, so how did you end up choosing marketing? Let's let's talk about what, you know, what, where you, how you got yourself to school <laughs> and how you made those choices. Um, that's an interesting story because, so I went to high school in Plymouth mm -hmm. and I started my freshman year doing child care. Okay. Which is, you know, an odd choice now that I'm doing marketing, but I did child care because I had been babysitting for years. Yep. I have, you know, a couple different, couple different, couple younger siblings. <laughs> and they are I, different. They <laughs> are different. <laughs> one's a girl, one's a boy. <laughs> um, I have a million younger cousins and I was always babysitting. So I went to high school and I was like, oh, you know, child care, cool. I could be a child care teacher, whatever. Yep. I did it my freshman year and I hated it. Okay. It was terrible. It was awful. <laughs> not for me. Yeah, you know, yeah. definitely for other people, not for me. Yeah. Um, but we have the tech program over there. So you can, you know, you can have a choice to do a different tech or you can do nothing at all. It's mm -hmm. completely up to you. So this is in high school. You're actually choosing sort of a major, or yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, um, you don't like I said. You don't have to, but they really encourage it. Yep. So, um, you know, they give out a booklet where you can read through, but you can also walk around. The teachers are really nice. You know, mm -hmm. they stay after. Um, so I, one day after school, I stayed after a little bit, and I went in to talk to the marketing department. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, you know, I'm in child care, but I'm kind of interested in this, but I don't really know what it is. And the teacher there, um, she said to me, oh, you know, it's about business and marketing, and it's, you know, the, I forget, she worded it somehow that just sold me on it. I forget exactly how she She's said it She's a marketing now. person, so she yeah, knew how to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she said something about, you know, it's the knowledge about how to sell people things, mm -hmm. something along those lines. And yeah. I said, wow, that's really interesting. Um, can I enroll? I know I missed freshman year, but can I enroll sophomore year? And she said, oh, well, actually, freshman year is really exploratory. So what I didn't know in childcare is all the other techs, mm -hmm. I think there's 11 or 12 other ones, um, they do what's called an exploratory program where you go for, to each tech for like three to four weeks. Oh, okay. So they really- So you would have had a little piece of- Of each one. Marketing of yep, whatever, yeah, yep. yeah. And then at the end, you get to pick. Okay. After having a little piece of each one, you get to pick. Yep. But they don't do it in childcare because they have all the little kids coming in. They actually have a full-time daycare. Oh my gosh. Yeah, wow. they have a legitimate daycare. Yeah. So they don't have all of the students filtering in and out because that would right, confuse that would, the kids and yep. you know, it could be dangerous or I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so 
child care doesn't do that, but every other tech does. So she said, you didn't miss anything. Freshman year here yeah. is really just to explore. Mm -hmm. And I said, perfect. Yeah. So sophomore year, I jumped right in, you know, and I was, I was on the same page with everyone else because they hadn't really learned anything freshman year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I jumped right in. I loved it. I did marketing all through high school. I did DECA competitions. What's DECA? Um, it's a marketing competition okay. program where you do different projects through school and it's a learning, it's a hands-on project. Mm -hmm. And then you take it to competition and you compete against other people. So I got to do that in high school and then when I got to college, I said, you know, I'm sticking with it. Yeah. Um, so I actually went to Cape Cod Community College first, mm -hmm. and then I transferred to Bryant University in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, yeah. And yeah. that's where I graduated and got my bachelor's. Oh, great. That's a really smart way to do it. Did you, like, deliberately choose it for... Yes. Okay. All of my friends went to, um, quote-unquote, regular colleges, Yeah. and all of my friends paid a lot more money than me, and, yeah. you know, I learned the same, because the first few years of college, same basic stuff. Right. So if right. you go to Cape Cod to get those first few years of basic math, basic English, all that stuff out of the way and then transfer, so much better. Yeah. And if, you know, you keep your grades up, you can get a lot of scholarships through Cape Cod mm -hmm. and a lot of different transfer opportunities and options. Yeah. And it just worked out a lot better for me. I have way less student debt than all of my friends. Right, right. Did you miss out on anything by doing those two years um, um, elsewhere? Or I guess I guess I missed out on the dorm life. Uh huh. But uh, I I got to go and visit my friends. Okay. So because I went to Cape Cod and all my friends, or not all my friends, but some of my friends went to the regular schools and did the regular dorm life, I could go up on weekends and visit them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'd hang out, visit. So yeah. I, I got that you got, experience. You got the flavor of it. Yeah. 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 And that was enough for me because it was just, it was, you know, right. it was not for me, Yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's for a lot of people, but it wasn't for me. Right. So I did get the flavor and I did, you know, see how they lived, but a lot of it, um, when I was there visiting my friends, this is going to sound so dumb, but when I would visit my friends, I would say, wow, your room is so small because mm -hmm. they had to share with one person. Right. Two people, sometimes it'd be four people in this little tiny room. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's their bed, it's their desk, it's where their dresser is. Right. Everything is clothes. crammed in this little tiny room. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. said, wow. And that's part of the reason when I transferred schools, um, I was hesitant about living in the dorms, yeah. but I did try it when I transferred to Bryant. I lived in a dorm for a little bit, and I just said, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm used to living in a regular house right. with, you know, the bedroom here, <laughs> right. the kitchen, kitchen here, yeah, the laundry yeah. isn't down three flights of stairs. Right, right, right. You know. Um, <laughs> so what did you end up doing? Did you move back home? Did you get I a, moved back home uh, okay. and I commuted from oh, okay. Plymouth to Bryant. Yeah, yeah. Which a lot of people say is a long commute, but I didn't mind it. And I was thinking once I graduate and get, you know, a career, I was looking at a lot of jobs in Boston, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to commute anyway. So right. if I get used to the commute now, right. by that time it'll kind of be an old hat. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, and that must have been a money savings as well. I mean, oh, not have to pay oh, for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, I think it was um, five grand a semester for living in the dorm. Mm -hmm. And that didn't even, I don't think that included the meal plan. Right. So it was five grand just to live in this little tiny room that right. I didn't even like anyway. With a stranger, yeah, potentially. Yeah, with a stranger. Yeah, 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 it was someone I didn't know. And of course, when I transferred in, um, the room I transferred into, they were all friends and I was the one outsider. Right. So it was actually kind of awkward because the only reason I got put in there is because they had the one opening, you know, but they were all close knit friends already because yeah. I transferred in. So it was my junior year. Mm -hmm. So they were also, they, they were had juniors already, and sophomores. Yeah. So they already had a couple years of friendship and bonding and whatever. Right. With, <laughs> you know, with them, behind them. And to be honest, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they weren't really receptive to having me there. Mm. I think they wanted, you know, like the extra space and the extra room. Oh, right. And I was kind of right. 
By you, you know, being there, like when you left, they got to use it as your bed as like their couch or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, or like have their friends stay over right, or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was definitely an intruder in their eyes. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, that can be, that's a tough situation. Yeah. It was awkward. Yep. But yeah. like I said, dorm life isn't for me, clearly. Right, right. <laughs> well, and I want to track back to something you said about, um, you know, getting used to, you n knowing that once you graduate, you're going to have to be commuting to Boston mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, is that just the, that's accepted that that's what work life is all about? I mean, w you know, do you think about trying to get into work on the Cape? Is there not enough opportunity? What, you know? Um, I, from my perspective, there wasn't enough opportunity. Okay. Because um, just, you know, looking for jobs and just hearing about the Cape and, you know, it's a well-known fact that obviously a lot of people live on the Cape during the summer, but a lot of them leave during the winter. Mm -hmm. So I feel like trying to find a full-time job that, you know, in the marketing field, because marketing is kind of awkward yeah. because I've gone to a couple job fairs on the Cape um, I, in Hyannis. It's, I think, I don't know, the Chamber of Commerce down there, whoever runs them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the businesses aren't looking for marketing help. Yeah. They're looking yeah. for retail, they're looking for managers, they're looking for um, like senior living mm -hmm. assistants or whatever what have you. Um, but they're not looking for marketing. So I just didn't really see any potential down there. Do you, do you think that it's because they're, they're not doing marketing or they're not valuing that role? Do you have any sense for why you think those I, jobs aren't I there? I think it is partially that. Okay. Because there seem to be a lot of businesses when I go to these job fairs um, and yeah, no one's looking for anything in marketing. And I would say marketing, I wouldn't even say what aspect, like a marketing assistant, marketing director, mm -hmm. advertising. Yeah. I wouldn't specify any of that. I would just say, oh, do you know, do you have any marketing opportunities? Mm -hmm. And they'd say, oh, no. Right, right. And I said, right. okay. Yeah. And that did get me into thinking, do they not have marketing teams? Do they not value it? Are they not using it? Right, right. So right. I think it's a lot of, they don't value it or they don't use it. Yep. You know, maybe they have one person doing all the marketing, but. And it's sort of added on to somebody else's job instead exactly. of being focused. Yeah. 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 So I just, I didn't see the opportunity down the Cape, so I didn't even yeah. consider it. So now, w uh, when did you graduate from college? Um, a year ago. Oh, okay. Actually. Oh, so you're yep. fresh out of school. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have you worked in your field at all, like you know, internships or? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, well, I've been doing work for the Bourne Historical That's Society. Right. Yep. <laughs> I do some work for Barlow's Clam Shack. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I actually worked at Edaville Family Theme Park over in Carver. Oh, I yeah. worked there for two years when I was in school. Yeah. Did so, you do summers or all, all oh, year? Oh, no, full year. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. year yeah. round. Yeah. Um, so I did that for a year and a half, two years. That must um, have been a good experience. Yes, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you care to share? or um, It was fun, and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I also learned that I did not want to work there after I graduated. Okay. So I did learn, you know, what I wanted to do, what I didn't want to do, yeah. what I wanted from a job. Yeah, you know, different things. So it was it was a good learning experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, thinking about the concept of people thinking, or you know, uh, businesses thinking like, oh, you know, we don't really need a marketing person. That's something that so and so can just do. You know, she writes the press releases, or he can go to this. I mean, what what does a, a dedicated marketing person add to an organization that you know somebody might be surprised by? Hmm. I think it adds a lot of life and it can bring in a lot more people that the organization might not realize. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it can really, that person, you know, having a dedicated role can really, um, really showcase the business in a way that someone without the marketing background cannot do just because they don't really know how. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I just think, how do I want to say this? Um, I think it's really beneficial, but people don't understand the benefit of marketing people. Right, right, right. Well, I, I know for me, um, you know, you've you've been. I'm, I'm learning so much from you, which is kind of humbling <laughs> because I am a couple years older than you. 
And you know, when you get to be my age, you like to think you know it all. <laughs> so to, to have a, a young person come and you know, and open my eyes. I mean, and you're so nice about it. it it's been a nice experience. <laughs> but you know, just just the way you strategically look at the calendar at the Bourne Historical Society, and you know, knowing you know, like we we, we tend to be very reactive. Mm -hmm. And you know you're looking at it much more proactive. You know, like knowing yeah. that oh hey, you know a week before this event you're going to want to have these photos all lined up and ready to publish to Facebook or Instagram, and you know, and just mm -hmm. kind of, and it it feels a little bit like common sense, but it's not it's not what we were doing before. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. So that's what <clears throat> a marketing person can bring to the organization is that knowledge that people are like, oh, right. Yeah. But people didn't think of it. So yeah. It's, it's, yeah. 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 The, the, the changes <laughs> that you've made, it's not like you're, you're bringing something that is, you know, like outrageous or, or like an, you know, an idea that's like, what? That's not going to work. You're just bringing these like really simple, elegant ways of doing things that suddenly feel like, oh, of course we should do it that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but because of that, I wonder if some people just think like, oh, well, we already know all that. You know, we don't I need somebody to tell us. Exactly. I think that's it. And I think that's part of the problem with these businesses not wanting or not, quote unquote, needing yeah. a marketing person. I think they just, they think it's all easy and they have it figured out. But you could say something as simple as like, oh, do you have a website? Right. And they say... Uh, I don't need a website. Right, right, and I say, right. oh, okay, well, you know, if someone's looking for your, you know, goods or services and they hear about you from a friend and they look you up on Google and you don't have a website, yeah, it's a little, in this day and age, it's a little bit weird that you wouldn't have something as simple as a website. Right. And that's right. something a marketing person could help you out with. Right. And even if they can't build the website, they can refer you, they can help you with all, all the different aspects of it. Right. You know, well, so it's something as simple as that that, again, seems common sense, but yeah, they yeah. didn't even think of it. Yeah. You know. And I wonder if there's another word that people think about, you know, you know, it used to be back in the day, everybody would have their listing in the yellow pages. And, yeah. you know, of course you're going to be in the yellow pages. And yeah. it's like, well, you know, if you, if if you would have been in the yellow pages 30 years ago, You'd have you a should website have a website now. now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just like that. Yep. And yeah. now if you have a listing in the yellow pages and not a website, then... Right, right. <laughs> yeah, because the first thing that really anybody's going to do is even... They go on Google. They, they're going to, yeah, they're going to yeah. Google you. They don't fish out their yellow pages and open it and... Right, right. You know, flip to, oh... You know, I need a house painter. Yep. People don't do that. Yep. <laughs> Although, I have to say, some people still do. Really? And, yeah, and, and, and one of the challenges, I think, in our organization, and you know, probably other organizations experience this, is, is to bridge the generations, mm -hmm. because we do still have people who who open the yellow pages? Open the yellow pages, <laughs> you know, and everybody else it goes immediately into recycling, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, or you know, folks don't even have a, a home phone, you know, only mm -hmm. a cell phone, so you're not even getting yellow pages. I was gonna say I don't have a home phone. <laughs> right? Well, neither do I, but you know, but lots of people do, mm -hmm. and um, and 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 so figuring out how to reach both audiences, both markets, yeah. and um, you know, and maybe not every business is is you know targeted at at all markets, but. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I think most, you know, especially on the Cape, if you want to stay in business, you have to. Yeah, well, you know. it's definitely something to consider, and that's another that's another aspect of why I'm so baffled that the businesses on Cape don't have or don't need marketing help because right. they do have all these different markets, and especially I think the people that stay there during the winter are more the people you're talking about. Who might refer back to the yellow pages yep. or the influx of all the people during the summer i think those are a little bit more technologically advanced they yeah. might use google yeah or maybe they'll use the yellow pages to look you up and then look at reviews on google exactly. they might use both yes. yes so i think that the businesses on cape definitely need to consider you know yeah all of that when thinking about whether or not they need marketing help yeah well and and you know i, I i'm just thinking you might, some, you know, a small business owner might think like, well, marketing, you know, I'm not Coca-Cola, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, putting a, you know, TV ad or something. And yeah. it might just sort of seem like, oh, that's just something that big businesses do. And, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, well, but that's the thing. You don't have to be Coca-Cola. Right. You know, you don't right. have to make a TV ad. Yeah. And if you're a small business, it can actually really help. Because if you're a small business, people don't really know you. So if you do a little bit of marketing, that can start to get the word out. People can start to understand and recognize your business. Yep. So it's not 
It's, I think a lot of people do think that way, but it's not just for big businesses. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, as a, <laughs> as a recent college graduate, you sort of have your sights set for if you, you know, have to pursue a career, that means driving to Boston. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there were more job opportunities on the Cape, would you, uh, or, you know, Cape, Plymouth, South Shore area. Yeah, I mean, yeah. would your preference be to be working locally, or is working in Boston part of what you would want to do just for development anyway? Um, I think I would consider opportunities closer to home, mm -hmm. so the Cape, Plymouth, South Shore, yep. that area. If if they were to present themselves and be, you know, good opportunities, what I deemed good opportunities. Yeah. So I would definitely stay close to home. Um, you know, if the opportunity were to present itself. But I also do want that, you know, big business corporation. I do want some of that experience. Mm -hmm. So I do see myself going into Boston at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to be honest, I'd work, you know, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, one nice thing about um, the nature of, of your work is that you don't necessarily have to be tied to a desk at a particular time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's intellectual work, you're doing copywriting, you're you know posting things online, that doesn't necessarily matter when you post it because you can schedule it. Yeah. Um, so it is a handy thing. I mean, you know, your work with us, you, you know, you're in the background um, writing things and making things happen for us, but you know, you could, you know, add another person that you're doing that to, you know, sort of like, mm -hmm. I guess I guess I'm one of those people that a year ago, if somebody had said, "Hey, should we hire a marketing person?" I might have thought, like, "Oh no, you know, we can't afford that. That's too big. That's too much." But mm -hmm. you know, hey, Haley's available for a couple hours a week to do some press releases. Yeah, sign yeah. her up. You know, so it's almost <laughs> like just breaking down the concept of what that might mean. Yeah. Um, so, um, so let, let's talk a little bit about you know what. What do you what do you like about living around here? What do you like about this area? Well, I love summertime mm -hmm. and the beaches and the ice cream shops and obviously the seafood and I love everything um, that makes it really Cape Cod. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just the very basic stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, and we talk about. Um, I feel like your generation. Are you are you a millennial? Is that do you do you, do we know yeah. what your generation is called? I, yeah, I'm a millennial. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, you know, and I, I feel like there's a lot of um, you know talk about like oh millennials these days, and they're not you know they're spending they're killing all their killing applebees, killing applebees. <laughs> they're spending all their money on avocado toast. They're you know there's Have all you these, had avocado toast. It's amazing, it's so worth it. I, I know. I just had it yesterday for dinner actually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so good. But um, but yeah, you you know you don't have a mortgage because you you know because mm -hmm. um, I don't want to buy a house because I have that looming student debt. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So so people forget that. So I I'd, like, I'd love to hear straight from a, a millennial. What are the challenges that you know you're faced as a, a 25 year old, 24 year old? 24. You know. Um, well, the challenges definitely are um, right out of college. Mm -hmm you have your degree and you're all excited, you're ready to hit the road running, um, you know, get this new job, but right away you're hit with a challenge because right now more people are graduating from college than ever before. Mm -hmm. So before you used to be able to get a bachelor's, you know, find a job right away, you know, start getting settled, yeah. this, that, whatever, but um, almost you know, as immediately as you're walking across that stage, you're already hitting a brick wall because there's already so many other people graduating at the same time as yep. you. Yeah. So that's a little bit difficult because there's so many people looking for jobs all at the same time, you know, so that's hard. And yep. then the student debt obviously is a huge factor yep. into people deciding even what jobs to choose. Right. So even if you find your perfect dream job, you know, this is awesome, this is what I'd love to do, I'm looking, it has great benefits, but they don't pay you that much. Right. So you kind of have to factor in, you know, can you afford to take this job? Mm -hmm. Because you have X amount of student debt, you probably have a car loan, you know, you're living somewhere, you have to eat. Right, right. You know, right. that avocado toast. <laughs> I know, that doesn't come cheap, right? <laughs> Well, so. Haley, I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today. I've really enjoyed talking to you. And, thank you uh, for having me. And, and thank you so much for uh, for everything that you're doing for the Bourne Historical Society. We, uh, we really couldn't do it without you. <laughs> oh, thanks. And you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for joining us today on A Window to Bourne. We'll see you next time.